I'm not sure if you've heard of the study, but Cornell University did research in 2018, and they ended up interviewing thousands of older adults who were nearing their death. And sounds like a morbid topic, but what they were trying to get from them is what was their biggest regret? And what struck me was 76% of them said that their biggest regret was that they didn't live their life trying to aspire to the dream that they had. And to me, it resonates with this podcast because it's really a sense of if you're living your life like that, you're not living your unique purpose that you were placed on earth to fulfill. And therefore, you're lacking in significance. And I can't even imagine going through life like that. It's so easy to, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny because so many people, if they Google my story, they're like, oh, Denny's waitress builds billion dollar company. She must just believe in herself and all the things. And most of my life, most of my life, and maybe so many people listening to us can relate to this, but so much of my life, so many moments I doubted. So my self-doubt was so big that I doubted myself out of my own destiny. And I think if we're not careful, it's so easy to do that. We start showing up in rooms as only part of who we are. We almost start living our life in a way, hiding in plain sight because we start to doubt who we are. And I don't know if you have this memory or not in your life or anyone listening, but I remember the first time as a little kid, I remember the first time as a little kid when I was in the classroom and I knew the answer, but I decided for the first time ever not to raise my hand. And I remember that moment so profoundly, the moment of just doubting all of a sudden, well, maybe I'm going to get it wrong. Maybe I don't know the, maybe I'll be judged. Maybe I'll get made fun of. Maybe I'll stand out and get made fun of if I'm right. Just all of a sudden that, that sense of awareness and that self-doubt kicked in. And I think for so many of us that can look like we're now adults not raising our hand on that Zoom at work or we're CEOs hitting every metric that says we're successful, but we're not sharing our actual real ideas that might move an industry forward because we're still uh, hiding in plain sight or dimming our light or playing it safe and, and really underneath it all, not believing we're worthy of it, which can kill so many, you know, kills more dreams, I think, than almost anything else. And I am... Um, you know, a lot of moments in my life, I always believed that if I achieved enough, then I would be enough. If I achieved enough, then I'd finally feel enough. And I spent decades of my life uh, and one decade in particular, hundred hour weeks, just achieving every possible metric of what the world tells me success looks like only to arrive still feeling like it wasn't enough. And so for me, and a big reason why I wrote Worthy, the book is because I felt like I believed this lie for so long <laughs> that I needed to achieve enough to feel enough, or that would be what the thing is to help me live a fulfilled life or become the highest, truest expression of myself. And I think it's only part of it. I think the growth and contribution and self-confidence that we build when we're going after the things is really important. But if we don't also underneath it all, and I love how powerfully you talk about this, but if also underneath it all, we aren't living in alignment with who we truly are and actually have self-worth underneath all of it, we never arrive at fulfillment. And I've just, I've had that experience now, even in moments in my life after achieving so many things and after building this billion dollar business and selling it and all the things that, and I remember realizing a huge moment in my life where I realized I have a lot of self-confidence, but I don't have a lot of self-worth and they're very different. And when we don't underneath it all, believe we're worthy of things, oh my gosh, it impacts the way we sabotage or don't go after things in our career, our relationships, our friendships, our goals and hopes and dreams. It's like the one thing that changes everything. So I've just become obsessed with studying <laughs> self-worth and just how do you build it? And so it's such an important thing. And to what you just shared with the Cornell study, it's, I think most of us can relate to that right now. I think most of us don't need to be at that age or at that stage in our life to right now, whether we're in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, right now be like, am I not the person I'm truly born to be? Am I hiding from my own potential? Am I hiding from my own dreams and ideas and possibilities? Am I doubting myself out of my own destiny? And I think that the beautiful thing and another big reason why I wrote Worthy the Book is because it is not too late 
It is never too late. We are never too old. It does not matter what past mistakes you've made. The most beautiful thing I believe in every ounce of my being is every single one of us, exactly as we are, regardless of our failures, regardless of our successes, we are fully worthy. And it's about learning those lies that lead to self-doubt and igniting those truths that wake up worthiness um, to kind of step into it. But it's never too late. And every person listening to us right now is fully worthy and enough and can start to live in alignment with their assignment and the person that they're born to be. And that to me is the most exciting thing. And I'm excited about Worthy the book. I am excited about Passion Struck the book. The time for change has come because it is so many of us just have gone way too many years and maybe ha have, are just starting to realize what has self-doubt already cost me in my life. And for so many of us, the answer is like way too much. So, but the good news is we can change it. So, and just to honor the work you're putting out in the world as a force for that as well.